Izbica is een gehucht in Polen. Voor september 1939 had het een overwegend Joods religieuze bevolking. Na de inval van de Duitsers in Polen werden de Joden uit dit plaatsje weggevoerd en vermoord. Met uitzondering van Thomas Blad, een van de zeer weinig overlevenden van het vernietigingskamp Sobibor. Hij was geboren en getogen in Izbica en vanuit zijn huidige woonplaats in Amerika keert hij jaarlijks naar Polen terug. In Izbica at that time were still about 2 to 300 Jews. The 23rd of April they surrounded the city, the town. The Nazis surrounded, picked up all the Jews, took him to the marketplace, loaded them in trucks. They took him away. And nobody did know where. After a while, we find out that there are three camps: Belzec, Sobibor, and Treblinka. The difference was in a concentration camp. There was about 25% chance to survive. If he was healthy, young, there was a chance. A dead camp was set up like a factory. He did come in without any selection, he went to dead. In a matter of 45 minutes, a transport of 1,000, 2,000 or 3,000 people, most four hours were ashes. I remember in the way to Sobibor, there were three labor camps, Jewish labor camps. And I remember how we talk in the trunk to each other. If they will take us to Sobibor, we will revolt, through ourselves on the Nazis. But still there's a hope that maybe the labor camp, or Sova, or Travniki. And slowly, with the time, we pass Tra or Sova, we pass the labor camp Travniki, and finally the truck arrived in the front of a fence, there was a big gate and a sign that says Zonderkommando, Special Command. We understood that we will die. A day before I arrived, they killed 72 Dutch Jewish prisoners because they supposedly tried to escape. And because of it, they took out from our transport 40 Jews. This way I find myself in Sobibor. Blad was 13 jaar toen hij in Sobibor terecht kwam. Hij was jong en sterk en dat betekende voorlopig uitstel van executie. Hij ontmoette daar Slomo Smeitzner, die zich na de opstand en de ontvluchting uit het dodenkamp bij een Russische partizanengroep aansloot. Na de oorlog vestigde hij zich in Brazilië, waar vorige maand Smeitzner overleed. Sobibor was eigenlijk een dodenkamp. Und das ist sehr wichtig, dass ich es einmal sage. Der Säuber hat, hat man ja nur getötet Juden. Das waren nicht keine Polen, das waren nicht keine Zigeiner, das waren nicht keine andere. Immer nur Juden. Verstehen Sie mal? Ja, ja. Auch jüdische Holländer. Ich möchte Ihnen was sagen. Die jüdische Holländer, wenn sie drin gekommen nach, nach Säuber, wenn sie, die, die haben überhaupt gar nicht gewusst. Weil die, wenn die Zeit, wenn die holländischen Transporte sind gekommen und die polnische Transporte, die polnischen Juden, weiß, wissen schon etwas. Ob die holländischen ob die überhaupt gar nicht gewusst. Die haben ja mitgebracht Essen, Trinken, äh, Schokolade, äh, Milch, Kondensiertmilch. Sie sind überhaupt gar nicht, die haben nicht begleitet, dass es so was wie Sobibor. Verstehen Sie mal? Later I sorted, I was in the sorting sharks, where I was sorting men's clothing. There were big tables, and after transport left, we sorted shirts on one side, pens on another side. And there you met Shlomo? Yeah, and over there I met Shlomo, of And course. Sasha. And Sasha when he arrived. Yeah. My last job was, I had a big incinerator and was burning all the documents, especially when the Dutch transports arrived. Pictures, documents. Of course, when the Polish transports arrived, they didn't have any more personal papers or pictures. But the Dutch, the Hollandish people, yeah. when they come in, had the albums. They didn't know they were going to die. So uh, I burned everything. Did they know it, the Dutch people? They didn't. They haven't. Any Not idea. at all. As a matter of fact, 
especially when the Nazi had a speech to them that now they arrive and they will relax after they, they have a shower and so on and so on and he even asked to write postcards back home and people wrote postcards not knowing that this is a trick to, to lure their relatives in Holland to Sobibor. He collected the, 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 the postcards and it back to Holland and the people went to the gas chambers. They did not know. In 1942 en 1943 vertrokken uit Westerbork totaal 19 veewagons met 34.000 Joodse Nederlanders op weg naar het vernietigingskamp Sobibor. Latest when the transport from Russia arrived from Minsk, yeah. where there were a lot of Russian prisoners of war, Jews. And at that time, there was so much work that Nazis again took out from the transport uh, people to help us, about 80 people. And uh, unwillingly, they picked up a lot of uh, uh, Jewish Russian prisoners of war. And they were young people, uh, knowledgeable in the warfare, they were former soldiers. And between them was Sasha, a Jewish lieutenant. And uh, he, with Leon Fellendle, were able to Leon Fellendle is played something. in the series by Alan Arkin. Alan Arkin. And Sasha, the Russian prisoner. By Rutger Howard. Yes. Yeah. He's a Dutchman, isn't he? He's a Dutchman, yes. October 14, 1943. The plan had two phases. Uh, first, a secret revolt. A secret... Um, execution of all the Nazis in a set time period between the two weapons. Four and five to kill the Germans and gain the weapons. Our weapons were knives and axes which Schloma prepared, Schloma Schmeisner prepared for this uh, revolt. Also we find some knives in the luggage of the income transports. And uh, so the first uh, secret killing should take place between four and five and later should be the open revolt when all of us get together to the main uh, roll, roll uh, call. And so it happened. We killed the Nazis one by one. We used the German punctuality. And the deputy commandant, Niemann, with a nice horse, arrived exactly in time. He was killed. And later, the another one in the shoemaker shops. And later, he was Wolf, he was called uh, he was called to come to the uh, very uh, house because a nice leather coat was found his, his size and he left over there I've seen it and while trying under the leather coat he was immobilized like in a state jacket and he was killed this way we gained the first uh, guns the first pistols later Schlommer Schlomach Martin stealed uh, rifles in the Ukrainian barracks and the rifles did come in. I bin in the Ukraine in the Kaserne reingegangen. I verstehe das mal bis heute nicht. Ich, wie wie habe ich das gekannt machen? Aber für mich das war schon ein egal. Ich bin in der Waffenkammer zu der Ukraine Barack reingekommen und habe drei Pixel rausgenommen und auch Munition. Weil für mich war das leicht rein in der Baracken. Ich fahre ja nach Mechanico und habe der Heiz eben immer geputzt und mir verrichtet und mir in Ordnung gelassen. Das ist nicht war schwer von mir reinzukommen. Aber rauszukommen mit den drei Bixe, das war das ganz schwer. The original plan war, that we should march out close, actually in the direction of the main gate, coming close to the guards, and the guards not not having any instructions because the Germans w would be killed, uh, wouldn't maybe realize what's happened until it's too close, and that time it would overwhelm them. But in the last minute was a little snug because one German was discovered dead, and uh, this is itself an action. And we have seen that there's no time to lose, or Sasha to jump on the table, and last Leon Fellander, and told us, all of us, the rest of us, what's happened, that now is the time to 
to run away, that most of the Nazis yeah. are killed, to take revenge, and whoever will survive to tell the story of Sobibor. That's what I'm doing now. What is your opinion about escape from Sobibor? It was very truthfully portrayed. The fact is when I, with Shlomo Schweizner, but we were consultants, yeah. when we entered the camp Sobibor, yeah. uh, we were shocked. Actually, it was a better setting than Sobibor in Poland. Yeah. Uh, because in the beginning, I suggested we should make it in Poland. But the houses over there, there's some... Anyway, this place in Yugoslavia was more no. authentic than now Poland. When uh, the scene of us escaping, no. the moment I was pinned onto the wire, when everybody was running, I was so impatient that I should run out because I identify myself, as far as I remember, with that boy laying onto no. the wire who portrayed me. That uh, at a point I start to run, this I don't even remember, but Rodka Howard told me and another people that three and a half hours later that I was running yeah. with the prisoners, with mm. the extras, and they find me three and a half hours later in the forest with broken glasses. I do remember I was running in the beginning later. I remember some Yugoslavian soldiers stopping me in the forest, and uh, I was tired and fall asleep, and they find me uh, this way. So, so real it was. After the revolt in Sobibor, Himmler ordered the closet of Sobibor, and it took uh, Sobibor apart. Some trees were planted, and the personnel for Sobibor, the Nazi personnel, was sent to Italy to a partisan infested area. And there is a theory that they were sent by the high SS to this place to be killed off. Because they didn't want witnesses. They didn't want witnesses. They were embarrassed. And Sobibor was embarrassment. When we first got married, uh, we were in Israel. Tom would have nightmares, but he'd have blood. He'd let out blood-curdling screams, and uh, I went to the neighbors and I said, "Did you hear the screams?" And they said, "Yeah, we heard the screams." So I thought that was strange. Why didn't anyone come running? I says, uh, "How come uh, no one came?" And they said, oh, we're used to that here. There's so many survivors that it doesn't mean anything. Nobody will ever come. Well, the screams went on for, I guess it was two or three years. They got less and less, less severe. And then it went into moans and cry, little cries, muffled cries. And, uh, but every night was a nightmare, every night. Every morning he'd wake up and say he had a nightmare, and I'd tell him, well, what was it? And he'd say it was such and such and such and such, and it would always be a variation on the thing. At the beginning, I, I said, Tom, maybe you should go to a psychiatrist. Maybe they can help you get rid of those nightmares. And he resisted, resisted and resisted. Finally, he said, okay, I'll go. He went to the psychiatrist, and, the, and he said, uh, I'm not so sure, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Blatt, whether it would be a good idea to get rid of them, because if he did, it could be even worse, because those nightmares are there for a purpose. They're to uh, protect him. Another thing that I think is because of his being a survivor is... Uh, his lack of a, his inability to make real deep and close relationships. He seems to uh, be with us or be aware or, you know, be all there. But then there are so many times when he really isn't. And I, I feel that it's uh, 
his mind and his feelings is really with Poland and the Holocaust. 